Hey, this is Alex with the Cash Fly Shop here to do another big old fly. Um, today we're going to do a double deceiver and I'm going to show some new products from Hairline as well. Um, we will start this fly off with a B10S, size 1. That's the Hunter Pack. Clamp this into the vise. Oh, yeah. Hold on. There will be a new vise coming soon here. There we go. <laughs> thread I'm using today is a 100 denier Vivas GSP. I think this is one of my favorite fret threads for any big streamer tying. A um, couple cool nuances to it is right here I just laid it down the hook shank flat and whenever it's time to spin deer hair or do anything you can really spin this stuff and it gets really fine. Um, something I wanted to note here. So let's get started. I'm going to take a piece of white bucktail Pretty good generous amount here. I'll measure it across my hand which is like three inches or so. And my feathers I'll tie off of here will be about three inches but kind of passive. It just kind of gives me a general uh, length reference here. One, two, three, get it flare a little bit and we'll wrap that up. All right. I've selected four saddle Chinese saddle hackles here. What I'll do is kind of I'll lay them all on that shiny side out two at a time and do the same hand measurement. And you don't have to do that. I just I just know my hand's about three inches, so it just makes the second half of this fly if you're trying to be consistent with the size of it. Then I'll take one of them, and I'll do that with the other two remaining feathers, so I know everything is the same length. So now we've got all these about the same size. I'll tie them two at a time. Um, something I'm going to do here, I was taught this by a salmon tire. If you put your fingers together like this when you pinch feathers, you get a more flat, like, grip on it than you do of, like here. Because look, your middle and thumb finger come together more flat. So that's what I do that with every time I apply feathers. So those two fingers there and see it comes out perfect. No thumb. Thumb and middle finger. Thumb and middle finger. Yes. Because that's how like people lay, like marry wings and do all that salmon stuff by they'll lay that in there so it keeps that really flat profile. Atlantic salmon flies you're talking about. Yes. Yes. But you can use it here with uh, you know these kind of large streamer patterns and really makes your feathers look nice. So I'll do that again and they just come out perfect. Okay, I'll wrap those up a little bit, up the shank. Then, something I do that isn't common on this fly, like when you see it, a lot of times you'll see this out in the Midwest or uh, out on the East Coast for kind of big striper flies. Something I like to do is I'm gonna get another piece of bucktail, and I like to use the tip if I can on this part because it's softer. Another piece here. And what I'll do is kind of secure these, like, I'll do another kind of round of the round around the feathers. So it kind of stiffens them up. Which, if you kind of think about a bait fish, they're not really as this eel kind of thing. Um, and it keeps your feathers to be kind of, it stays in that, that way I just tied them. So it kind of keeps them secured and it also uh, limits them in movement a little bit. In a good way. Like less wrapping around the back of the hook. Too. Exactly. Do that and it kind of makes a nice, it'll get a nice kind of bait fish shape around it. Always remember to use your rotary vise to check the other side of your flies here. Wrap down. Take some UV polish needle and silver. I'll wrap up the hook. Sometimes I'll put some flash on this tail here before I start. Sometimes I won't. Um, I think a lot of times it's okay to have a very non-flashy fly. A lot of times in salt water or fresh water, you know, these things that you see that you can buy are just this kind of gaudy, awful, kind of flashy stuff. Um, now a little bit's good, but so we'll wrap this all the way up the hook shank. Kind of tease those fibers as you do it. So I'll stop it about there at about a half inch. Make sure everything looks good here. All right. 
secure that down. Some people out in Florida will call that their snook fly, and that's totally okay. Here we'll some gray bucktail. This is the shad gray. What I usually like because it's a little darker than the pearl gray. Gives you a better contrast against the white. I'll put a pretty generous amount here. It doesn't mean to go crazy though. So what I normally do when I'm doing this kind of part of it is I'll go about to like where these longest hairs go about halfway through the uh, saddles here. And that's just for aesthetic reasons. So it kind of looks nice by the time you're done doing this thing. Make sure all those short hairs are out of there. Kind of measure that back again. <clears throat> I'll trim those butts really fine, like right up against my fingernail. And this is another time where I'll take this Vivas and spin it. Kind of let that spin there. Oh, I catch it again. And that's it th making the thread uh, makes the thread less more flat. Yes, more compressed. And so it just makes your fly look prettier uh, by the end of this because it you don't have as big of a thread wrap. And you'll see kind of as I go, when I fold this over, I kind of make a bullet head kind of thing. I'll explain that here in a second. Do that. Make sure we kind of, I'll measure it to about the same density too. Take some of that out. It's okay to be a little more sparse on the white because it kind of acts as a belly accent color. So we'll go here, out front. Trim that up. And I haven't really done too crazy of aggressive, hard, uh, you know, really hard wraps on this yet until I get both of them on there. Now I'll do that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'll fold these over and it kind of makes a little... I'll check this other side. I'll make kind of a bullet head. If you're familiar with that fly. If not, then you just kind of fold your bucktail back, get it to the point where you want it. And for me, like I don't like to have as big of a bump up there because I still want to maintain this kind of taller profile on a bait fish. So if we're talking like shad or sardines or something, they get to be a little more like that. So I'll leave that there. Do a little hand whip finish here and I'll pinch this loop so then it goes right onto that. If you're like me and you lose your whip finish all the time, that's a great little trick. So I'll pinch that loop, pull again. And that's good. That GSP will wrench down a little bit harder. So I'll touch this up with some Zappa Gap and we're halfway there. You don't need much of this stuff. Okay. Leave that. Our front hook here. So I don't know if people are familiar with this kind of flies, the SA210 Bob Clouser one aught Great stout hook. Uh, we've been using this on salmon clouders and stuff, and it is a sharp son of a gun. So we will. Oh, first, I'm going to do a new articulation method here today. We're going to take this new next generation shank from Fish Skull. If you're familiar with the Game Changer, they made a new shank that is a little more, uh, this wire's thinner. Hopefully to make the fly a little lighter when you throw it, but I have been using it to fuse flies together. Because I get sick of wire. Okay, so I'll fold bend this out a little bit. See, it's pretty thin, easy to do. Kind of go here. What I'm gonna do is take this with my fingers and do a thread base before I even tie the shank on. And I'll explain for a couple reasons why you want to do that. I'll see one whip finish because we're going to put plenty of glue and other thread wraps over that. This should save you a little bit of time. I'll set this down. I'm going to apply a base of thread here down my hook.
Um, this is obviously not going on this fly, but this size is just for video reference here. It comes with one pre-made eye, and also it will come with, looks like, um, nine more of just this part. And you glue your own eye into it, so it gives you ownership over your fly. You don't have to stick with whatever tabbed eye. We've used Pro Sport Fisher eyes here before. Or there's, a, I can't remember, there's a lot of other companies that do them. Fish, but, fish school eyes can go on those, or hairline eyes can go on those, or you know, you can lay them flat, you can have them 3D. But the idea is that they are on the tabs with one continuous, durable piece. And what's so nice with the tab eye too, is that it, I can really get, the length and it helps kind of establish the shape of your bait fish head as well in my opinion especially if you lay like glue over the top of this thing it really makes it nice and uniform it's easier to and you can just kind of see it better and there, it just helps with your durability of the fly too huge difference in durability what's nice it's kind of more discreet too I can kind of hide it back there I'm gonna do this this one first let's see how it looks I, I like that. So we'll do this side. So I can see how that looks there. I'll give it a nice tight crank. Now what about not cutting it? And just folding it. And I just like because I can kind of peel back these tabs and cut a little easier because you'll do that uh, both methods anyway. Right. Get that real nice and close, and then I'll make sure and wrap over that again. That's why I didn't want to make a big old, you know, fuss with the getting too many thread wraps here, because now I can cover that up all nice and good. I'll hand tie it off, and then you can use whatever Loctite or favorite glue behind that UV glue over the eyes here. Kind of like the big eye. There we go. Just double deceiver pattern with some new uh, new little tricks.